Australia's grey-headed flying fox, a threatened keystone species. The capacity to fly long distances each night makes the grey-headed flying fox a key disperser of pollen, seed and nutrients, therefore a species on which the sustainability of eastern Australian ecosystems depends. However, due to population decline and ongoing clearing of their habitat, this megabat has a threatened species listing of vulnerable. This listing means the species faces extinction in the medium term future. Additionally, as indicated in a study by McConkie and Drake 2006, megabats quickly become functionally extinct. That is, without large numbers, they cannot fulfil their role in the ecosystem. However, despite the importance of this protected species to a sustainable environment, these megabats continue to be disturbed, displaced and destroyed. Reasons for decline of grey-headed flying fox populations include the following. A. Deforestation and fragmentation of habitat has depleted roosting and foraging resources. The resulting malnutrition and displacement may contribute to reproductive failure and vulnerability to predation and to anthropogenic threats such as power lines. B. Associated with global warming, increased incidence of extreme weather events is increasing megabat death from heat exhaustion, injury and starvation. C. When foraging in orchards, lactating greyhead flying foxes are the most likely megabat to be shot, to be trapped in poorly designed netting or to starve in camp when their mothers do not return. D. Attempts to displace colonies from urban roosts have resulted in death from separation of pup and mother, heat exhaustion and stress-related miscarriage. And E. Grey-headed flying foxes are slow to recover from population decline as they have late sexual maturity and only produce one pup a year. Why should we care? As the largest megabat, grey-headed flying foxes disperse pollen and rainforest fruit seed up to 100 kilometres from parent trees and shrubs. Pollination across distances of over 5 kilometres maintains genetic diversity of plants, therefore an ability to adapt to climate change. Further, many species of native flora are adapted to pollination by megabats. Additionally, by dispersing seed and nutrients, megabats contribute to reforestation of degraded land and to the flow of nutrients in marine environments. Indirectly, many native fauna species rely on the presence of grey-headed flying foxes in the ecosystem. For example, the koala relies on megabats to pollinate 50% of its feed trees. However, for an ecosystem to be sustainable, a large population of a keystone species is necessary to fulfil their key roles. What can we do? Conservation and connection of fragmented native forests including coastal overwintering habitat and traditional roosting sites is a priority for the protection of grey-headed flying foxes. To repair fragmentation of megabat habitat, the biodiversity of national parks can be extended to farms and tree plantations using heterogeneous native revegetation of large areas, matrices and corridors. To support non-lethal management of the grey-headed flying fox in orchards, citizens can assist conservation groups such as Don't Shoot Bats in lobbying governments to end licensing to harm megabats and to subsidise the cost of effective netting. As relocation of megabat colonies appears to have been largely unsuccessful, accommodation of urban roosts may be achieved through buffer zones. For example, Low-growing shrubs on which megabats do not feed can buffer residences from noise and odours, while reforestation of roost sites can buffer colonies from urban heat and disturbance. Continuing to address the negative image of megabats may promote conservation. For example, education around prevention of interspecies disease may reduce fear of megabats. Additionally, community consultation and support of low impact tourism at urban roosts and of wildlife and land care organisations may encourage conservation.